echocardiogram often called just echo in short is ultrasound imaging of the heart though the actual types and details mentioned in echo report may vary between institutions and even persons reporting it in general there are several common aspects reports of children with birth defects of the heart will have a different pattern this discussion is mainly on an echo report from a general cardiology setup rather than a specialized report in addition to details of identification and date of procedure reason for the test and the quality of images are usually mentioned in the beginning of the report quality of images may be poor in those with lung disease and in obese individuals finer details in the report should be interpreted with caution when the image quality is reported as poor or as poor echo window poor echo window means that good quality images were not obtained during the study this is common in those with chronic obstructive lung disease as the hyperinflated lungs overlap the heart in parasternal and apical echo windows in chronic obstructive lung disease when parasternal and apical windows are poor subcostal window is usually good the usual echo windows are the parasternal apical subcostal and suprasternal each window allows the imaging of certain cardiac structures lungs do not come in the way of the ultrasound beam in the subcostal view air in the lungs do not permit transmission of the ultrasound beam to the heart so the usual echocardiographic windows are regions where the overlap by the lungs is minimal chamber sizes and measurement of thickness of chamber walls are either given as tables or the relevant picture showing the measurements printed on the report in some reports reference normal values are also provided while looking at reports of children measurements should be interpreted considering the physical size of the child as heart chambers grow in size as the child grows in addition to the measurements there will also be a qualitative report on whether the chambers are enlarged or thickened and whether they are contracting well or not an enlarged cardiac chamber is mentioned as dilated while a thickened one is mentioned as hypertrophied in some cases it may be both dilated and hypertrophied hypertrophy with dilatation of cavity is called eccentric hypertrophy while hypertrophy without dilatation is concentric hypertrophy when the interventricular septum is hypertrophied disproportionately compared to the posterior wall of the left ventricle it is known as asymmetric septal hypertrophy usually seen in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy details about all four cardiac valves will be mentioned in the echo report in case of aortic valve if it is congenitally abnormal it may be bicuspid instead of the normal tricuspid valve very rarely the aortic valve can also be quadricuspid morphology of the valves and their opening and closing will be assessed during echocardiography valve thickening and calcification are often noted in stenotic valves stenotic valves also dome while opening due to commissural fusion in case of mitral valve commissural fusion causes paradoxical anterior motion during diastole instead of the normal posterior opening movement in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy anterior mitral leaflet may move anteriorly in systole producing obstruction of the left ventricular outflow tract this is known as systolic anterior movement or sam of the mitral valve thickening fibrosis and calcification of subvalvar apparatus is common in rheumatic mitral valve disease atrioventricular valves can prolapse into the atria during systole producing regurgitation in mitral valve prolapse the valve may also be thickened due to myxomatous deposits in elderly with degenerative mitral valve disease and in those with chronic kidney disease the mitral annulus may be grossly thickened and calcified dimensions of the great vessels aorta and pulmonary artery have to be checked dilated aortic root can produce aortic regurgitation due to poor co-optation of aortic leaflets 
ഇൻ എൻ എമർജൻസി സിറ്റുവേഷൻ ആയോട്ടിക് ഡിസെക്ഷൻ ഫ്ലാപ്പ് മേ ഓൾസോ ബി നോട്ടഡ് ഇൻ ദി അസെൻഡിങ് ആയോട്ട റയർലി പൾമണറി ആർട്ടറി ഈസ് ഡയലേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ലെഫ്റ്റ് ടു റൈറ്റ് ഷൺസ് ആൻഡ് പൾമറി ഹൈപ്പർ ടെൻഷൻ റയർലി ഇറ്റ് കുഡ് ഓൾസോ ബി ഇഡിയോപതിക് ഡയലറ്റേഷൻ ഓഫ് പൾമറി ആർട്ടറി പാർട്സ് ഓഫ് ദി സുപ്പീരിയർ ആൻഡ് ഇൻഫീരിയർ വിനക്കാവ് ഓൾസോ ക്യാൻ ബി ഇമേജ്ഡ് ബൈ എക്കോ കാർഡിയോഗ്രഫി ഇൻഫീരിയർ വിനക്കാവൽ സൈസ് ഈസ് ഓഫൺ യൂസ്ഡ് അറ്റ് ദ ബെഡ് സൈഡ് ടു അസസ് ഹൈഡ്രേഷൻ സ്റ്റാറ്റസ് ഫോർ ഗൈഡിംഗ് ഫ്ലൂയിഡ് തെറാപ്പി നോർമൽ ഇൻഫീരിയർ വിനക്കവ കൊളാപ്സസ് ഇൻ ഇൻസ്പിരേഷൻ വിത്ത് അറ്റ്ലീസ്റ്റ് ഫിഫ്റ്റി പെർസെൻറ്റ് ഡിക്രീസ് ഇൻ ഡയമെൻഷൻസ് ഈഫ് ദ ഇൻഫീരിയർ വിനക്കവ ഇസ് ഡയലേറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് ഡസ് നോട്ട് കൊളാപ്സ് ഇൻ ഇൻസ്പിരേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് പ്ലിത്തോറ ഓഫ് ഇൻഫീരിയർ വിനക്കവ ഇൻഫീരിയർ വിനക്കവൽ പ്ലിത്തോറ ഇൻഡിക്കേറ്റ്സ് ഹൈ റൈറ്റ് ഏട്രിയൽ പ്രഷർ പൾമറി വെയിൻസ് ക്യാൻ ബി സീൻ ജോയിനിങ് ദി ലെഫ്റ്റ് ഏട്രിയം യൂഷ്വലി ഓൺലി ത്രീ പൾമറി വെയിൻസ് ആർ ഇമേജ് ഇൻ ദി അഡൽട്ട് പൾമറി വെയിൻസ് വിൽ നോട്ട് ബി സീൻ ജോയിനിങ് ദി ലെഫ്റ്റ് ഏട്രിയം ഇൻ കേസ് ഓഫ് ടോട്ടൽ അനോമലസ് പൾമറി വീനസ് ഡ്രെയിനേജ് സംടൈംസ് ഓൺലി വൺ ഓർ ടു മേ ജോയിൻ ദി റൈറ്റ് ഏട്രിയം ഇൻ പാർഷ്യൽ അനോമലസ് പൾമറി വീനസ് ഡ്രെയിനേജ് വയൽ കമ്മിങ് ടു ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദി ഹാർട്ട് ദ കോൺസെൻട്രേഷൻ ഈസ് ഓഫൺ ഓൺ ദി ലെഫ്റ്റ് വെൻട്രിക്കൽ വിച്ച് പംസ് ബ്ലഡ് ടു ദി ഹോൾ ബോഡി an important value in the report is the ejection fraction ejection fraction is the fraction of the blood from the full left ventricle which is ejected out during each contraction suppose after filling when the left ventricle relaxes in diastole it has 100 ml of blood if 70 ml is pumped out by the next contraction or systole the ejection fraction will be 70% an ejection fraction below 50% is considered below normal the lower the ejection fraction the poorer the pumping function of the heart a normal left ventricular ejection fraction is usually reported as good left ventricular function if it is severely impaired it is noted as severe left ventricular dysfunction when the left ventricle is stiff and relaxes poorly in diastole it is reported as left ventricular diastolic dysfunction left ventricular diastolic dysfunction is quite common as age advances another important aspect is the contraction of each region of the left ventricle if all regions of the left ventricle contracts normally it is reported as no regional wall motion abnormality if a particular region contracts poorly it is reported as hypokinetic a region which is not contracting at all is reported as akinetic sometimes a region might bulge out when all other regions are contracting such a region is called dyskinetic regional wall motion abnormalities are common after a myocardial infarction when a blood vessel supplying a region of the heart muscle is blocked that region shows a regional wall motion abnormality of any of the above mentioned types in conditions like dilated cardiomyopathy instead of regional wall motion abnormality the whole left ventricle is hypokinetic then it is called global hypokinesia defects in interventricular and intraatrial septa will be mentioned if present along with the location size and shunt across it if there is no defect it is reported as intact intraatrial and interventricular septa presence of a patent ductus arteriosus will also be mentioned similarly estimated right ventricular systolic pressure is mentioned as rvsp calculated from the velocity of the tricuspid regurgitation jet by doppler echocardiography Indirect evidence regarding pulmonary hypertension will be obtained by the size of the pulmonary artery, movement pattern of pulmonary valve, and hypertrophy or dilatation of the right-sided cardiac chambers. In such cases, the shunt may be right to left or bidirectional instead of the usual left to right. Locations of atrial septal defect are sinus venosus, secundum, and primum. starting from the upper end of the septum downwards primum atrial septal defect is usually 
associated with regurgitation of atrioventricular walls. Locations of ventricular septal defects may be mentioned as outlet, perimembranous, muscular or inlet. Outlet is just below the pulmonary wall and inlet near the atrioventricular walls. Any of the heart walls can also be abnormal either as a birth defect or acquired later in life due to diseases. If a valve is narrowed, it is called stenosis. There can be mitral stenosis, aortic stenosis, tricuspid stenosis and pulmonary stenosis or a combination of these. Leak in a valve is called regurgitation. So there can be mitral regurgitation, aortic regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation and pulmonary regurgitation or a combination of these. There can also be stenosis and regurgitation in the same valve. Stenosis can be graded as mild, moderate and severe depending on the severity. Area of the narrowed valve may be mentioned in certain cases. Regurgitation can be graded as trivial, mild, moderate and severe. Trivial regurgitation as the name implies are usually ignored especially in relation to the right sided walls pulmonary and tricuspid. Pressure gradients across the walls will be mentioned when the valve is narrowed. The gradient increases as the severity of the narrowing increases. When there is a leak in the tricuspid valve, the pressure difference between the right ventricle and right atrium can be calculated. This is usually mentioned as TR or tricuspid regurgitation gradient. Usually a nominal value of 10 is added to this gradient and mentioned as the estimated right ventricular systolic pressure or RVSP. An elevated RVSP implies increased pressure in the pulmonary artery known as pulmonary hypertension if the pulmonary valve is not obstructed. If there is fluid collection in the pericardial cavity, it is reported as pericardial effusion. The estimated amount of the collection will be reported as mild, moderate or large. Diastolic collapse of the right atrium and right ventricle may be noted in cardiac tamponade. Gross thickening and calcification of the pericardium may occur in chronic constrictive pericarditis. Vegetations attached to the walls can be infective or non-infective. Non-infective vegetations may be seen in Lipman Sachs endocarditis of systemic lupus erythematosus and Marandic endocarditis. Marandic endocarditis is non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis seen in advanced malignancy. Commonest cardiac tumors are the myxomas of which left atrial myxoma is the commonest. Left atrial myxoma usually prolapses into the left ventricle in diastole as it has a long stalk. Rhabdomyomas may be noted in the ventricles, especially in infants. After the descriptive report and the measurements, the final conclusion is usually reported at the end of the report. In case of a normal adult study, it may read as no regional wall motion abnormality, good left ventricular systolic function. Regional wall motion abnormality may be written in short as RWMA also. If abnormalities have been detected, the conclusion part will be larger and include the salient parts of the echo study. For example, in a person with a ventricular septal defect, it may read as congenital heart disease, large perimembranous ventricular septal defect, left to right shunt, moderate pulmonary arterial hypertension, good biventricular function. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video.